What's up guys? Well, welcome back to the channel. Behind me here is our 1955 Ford F100 project, which if you've uh, subscribed and follow along with the playlist of this truck, you've seen it go from a piece of crap junkyard truck to the running driving truck that I'm constantly having people trying to buy all the time. But so, what we're doing today, the rear end of this truck is bent. Uh, also, the leaf spring is bent. So when you're going down the road, it sits to the side just a little bit, so it's, it's terrible. Uh, it does have a 373 gear in it. It's a 7.5 rear end. So we're going to be changing that out. The 75373 gear uh, with the drums, we'll be changing that out to a disc brake from a Mercury Mountaineer. Now the Mountaineer is already located on top of the Leafs, so I'm not going to have to relocate uh, this kit on the other one. The spring perch is already on the bottom, which is perfect. And the distance is the same on the Mountaineer as the Ranger. Uh, the leaf springs are all springs from a Ford Ranger that I'll be sticking under there. So first things first, I'm going to take them 12 millimeter bolts out of this drive shaft. I'm going to go up here, take this speed sensor cable loose, and then take my brake cable loose right there from that. Both the shocks. Uh, I'm going to keep all the U-bolts and everything still bolted up. I'm just going to take let the truck down and loosen all these leaf spring bolts and once the rear end is sitting down on the ground i can take all them bolts out and raise the truck right up off that rear end and then set that new one in place now this is the rear end that's going to be going back in that truck of course disc brakes which is real nice and this this is what i really like sway bar the truck didn't have that already on the rear uh, rear end of that ranger so i'll be putting that on there um all the u-boats and things like that so that's the rear end going back in it Okay, well, drive shaft's out. Okay, drive shaft is out. So, I'm just going to sit it up out of the way from that rear end. Keep from adding pressure on the tail shaft. Now that everything is taken loose and taken off, I did have to remove my uh, step boards due to the bolt being right there in the way of where the step board is for it to come out. So now that I've got that removed, I've got the ones on the back loose so that I can use a hammer to knock on that nut to knock that out. So now all I gotta do is sit this thing down on the ground and get those bolts knocked out and pull that rear end out of the way. Okay, well, as you see here, we got the rear end out of the truck now. Uh, I did have to cut a bolt out of this rear leaf spring over here. This leaf spring was the bad one anyway. I did go ahead and buy two, so I ain't really worried about that. But I'm gonna go ahead and roll this rear end out, get these wheels mounted on the other rear end so I can roll it in here, and then we'll sit it in place and see exactly how it fits. What brackets I need to cut off this rear end and relocate onto the new one, and then get it all welded in, fabbed up, sandblast it, and then paint it. Okay, now something to note. When you're replacing your Ranger rear end out for an Explorer Mountaineer, this right here will have to be swapped over. Um, originally, the Ford Ranger rear end would have mounted on the bottom, so your lineup pin is on the bottom. Well now, your Mountaineer rear end is going to be mounted on the top, so you're going to have to take that bolt out and swap it around. So what you need to do, get you some good vice grips, make sure to clamp them on each side. Once you've done that, Clamp your pin, and then 15 millimeter, just take out your pin. Slide the pin out, put it on the other side of the leaf spring there. And there you have it. Now, the leaf spring is ready for the rear end to go on top. Before you put the rear end up there, you wanna make sure you wire brush that out. We're just putting all this in right now just as a temporary fix to get everything where we want it and then everything welded in for added shock braces. So all this is gonna come back out anyway. So that right there is how you go ahead and swap that pin out. Okay, now we have our wheels that was on the 7.5 Ranger rear end over here on our uh, Mercury Mountaineer Ford Explorer 8.8 .8 rear end. Uh, got that to easily roll it in. Of course, now we have disc brakes and this is the sway bar off of the Mountaineer. Now the Rangers also have a sway bar that mounts to the front. 
Uh, it's a little bit a little bit smaller, so I'm going to try to utilize this and build mounts on this frame for this to work. But now we got the rear end in here. I can lower the truck down, put one side of the leaves in place, lower down, sit them in place, and just get the rear end lined up, raised up in the air, and kind of see where everything's sitting. Uh, this rear end is a little bit wider than the Ranger, so I've got to make sure there's no issues with any scrubbing or scraping or rubbing anywhere. I did have to run a one inch spacer on the Ranger on each side, so hopefully this will make up the difference where I don't have to do that anymore. So let's get it up there. How about that shop hanging there? I'll slide that over whenever it comes to around time to it. Alright. I know one was on one side, one was the right. other side. I didn't know. Alright, roll yours forward a little bit. A little bit more. Alright. Uh, pull it my way some. Too much? Too much. Try that. Don't want the bed to come down on it. Okay, I went ahead and put the rear end in. I used these original Mountaineer uh, leaf spring lower brackets for my shocks, even though it kind of put it in a little bit of a bind. These need to be twisted. Uh, I still have to do that. I'm just sitting here for now just because I ain't gonna really worry about much. Uh, the reason why I reused these right here and not relocating them here is because this right here. This is the sway bar link uh, mount and I will be using that sway bar link mount so that can't operate with it here. It'll get in the way. So I'm using this factory style and I'm going to just move this right here to tilt it. But I've got it all in. U-bolts are in. Everything is buttoned up speedometer everything works and checked all that but the rear end as soon as i let the truck down sitting on the bump stops now i don't want to see notch this and get it down any lower uh, i actually want my truck to sit just a little bit higher i want it to sit up off this bump stop so we're going to be installing a product today going from the frame to the top of the rear end and adding an airbag and that's going to be our helper spring. We're going to raise that up with air, get it up off that bump stop, get to exactly the height that I want in the back. And then I'm going to be sitting perfect on the back of this truck. So let's go ahead and show you that product. Okay, here we are. Now this is Vixen Air Products. These are helper springs. And you get this little lovely pad right here for the bottom. It's already curved to go around your rear axle. That's going to be this right here. This is going to be the rear end pad. You also have this pad. You got the hole for your airline, the hose for your bags. And this right here, matches the contour of my ranger frame perfectly where it's got that little indention so that's going to be going on the top and we're going to be welding that directly um, also comes with all your provided airlines needed for the truck the top section the screws into your airbag and clips into your uh, airline and this one here which this is the little air chuck and you can just mount them anywhere, wherever you want to easily add air. Okay. Now, if I can get this sun gun out of here. Now this right here, here's your air bag or your air spring. This will be going in. Um, and I'm going to collapse this all the way down and kind of see how well it fits in there. I don't want this to be collapsed completely all the way down. And that would be exactly where it's riding. And I also don't want it to be all the way up with as much air as I can possibly put in this. Because if this right here is fully compressed with air, or fully, fully inflated, sorry, with air, this right here will be so tight, it will be no different than riding on a bump stop. Because that right there won't have no give. So you want this to have, this is my little valve, you want this to have a little bit of spring in it once it's aired up. That way you have more travel with suspension and a lot more of a comfortable ride. So that's what I'm going to be doing right now. Okay, well that's going to pretty much wrap it up 